everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to share with you my book collection, part of my book collection. I did this before years ago, I think when I first started my booktube channel on my collection of different Wuthering Heights editions. And if you're interested in seeing an updated one, let me know because I've definitely added to it since then. But if you're new here, uh, you might not know that Ray Bradbury is one of my favorite authors ever. One of my favorite books of all time is Something Wicked This Way Comes. I hosted a read along for it two years ago, a year ago, I don't even remember. Uh, but I adore Ray Bradbury so much. And that's really saying something because a lot of his stuff to me falls under the science fiction realm. But for him, he would label it fantasy. But a lot of it is space travel and things of that sort, things that I think of as science fiction. And normally I don't really like that stuff, but his prose is beautiful. That's something that I really like in a novel is beautiful prose. Another thing that I really like about Bradbury's work is a lot of it is about children or coming of age. Um, and it's obviously set <laughs> uh, a decent amount of time ago. So we're talking like pre-internet, pre-cell phones, and it all feels very nostalgic, even if it's in a situation or a location or something that you have never experienced yourself. Bradbury really makes you nostalgic for that. And I am a very nostalgic person. I have like I spend a lot of time thinking about the past, not in like a regretful way, but I like to have um, you know, like traditions and things of that sort that I don't know I just I like being nostalgic about things and talking about memories with my friends and my family and everything and so these books really do that for me so let's go into my collection um, talk a bit about the books and we'll just see what happens throughout the video so the first book I'm going to talk about is Fahrenheit 451 this is the first novel that I ever read by Ray Bradbury I had to read it my sophomore year of high school I think this is the edition that I read and I even still have my like vocabulary words <laughs> highlighted in the book. Um, so I was 15 when I read this. So, oh, 17 years ago, I read Ray Bradbury for the first time. Um, so this is just your basic 50th anniversary edition from Del Rey, Valentine Books. Um, they even put it under science fiction. But yeah, it's your typical, you've got the burning, the man made out of books on fire. Um, but I do also have this edition that I probably found like at a used bookstore, like half price books. Um, but this is a 1982 copy, I believe. I believe it's a 1982 copy. Um, it's just got some books on fire. Uh, it says the temperature at which books burn. Um, the novel of firemen who are paid to set books ablaze. I just, I couldn't pass it up for my collection. I'm probably going to say that a lot. So eventually, uh, with Ray Bradbury, I wanted to read more and I grew up watching the movie Something Wicked This Way Comes, which came out in the 80s and that is a solid movie and I'm really mad that I can't find it anywhere to watch or to stream or anything. Um, so I picked up the novel, Something Wicked This Way Comes, and this is about a carnival that comes to town and at night evil things are happening. And it's definitely about aging, coming of age. We have two main characters. I think they're 12 or they're about to turn 12 in this book. And um, the prose is so beautiful. There are so many things to quote in this book about fall and uh, about like nature about aging and family and friendship and love and it is just one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. I always say it's one of my favorite horror novels although it is not terrifying. Um, it is very much a slow burn more literary type of horror um, but it is something that I will revisit <laughs> all the time throughout my life. Uh, this was the edition that I first read and then once I fell in love with it um, my wonderful husband gifted me the folio edition one Christmas. Uh, it is absolutely stunning. It is, of course, illustrated on the inside. I love this book so much. Like, it is, it's got beautiful illustrations. 
and I, I think it really does well like capturing the essence of the story. I think the, the photos are great. It is just such a beautiful book and I'm sure you've seen it if you uh, aren't new to my channel I'm sure you've seen this facing out on my shelves and you've probably seen me talk about it a million times because I love it. I have another edition of Something Wicked This Way Comes. I have a Bantam Books edition that was published in 1967. Uh, so major novel by Ray Bradbury, Something Wicked This Way Comes. The world's greatest living science fiction writer. It is not in the greatest of shape, but I was super excited to find this uh, at a used bookstore by my house. And yeah, so of course, you know, once I found this brand new book that I love so much, I had to have multiple editions of it. The last edition of Something Wicked This Way Comes I have is this one, which is a Noth, Noth <laughs> edition. Um, this one, I don't think it's like anything really special. I think it's um, a copy from like the 1980s, um, but I really liked the cover and it's got deckled edges, which I do not actually like, but again, I just wanted it for my collection. I'm pretty sure the next book that I read by Bradbury that I wanted, like, you know, after I read Something Wicked, I was like, okay, I have to read it all, uh, was The October Country. This is the only book or only edition that I have of this. It's just like the Ballantine mass market paperback. Um, it is illustrated. Um, which is fun, uh, but this is one of the best short story collections that I have ever read. I will definitely be revisiting this one throughout my life as well because it is, it is so good. Oh, I do actually have one more edition of Something Wicked This Way Comes. I have the uh, Bantam Spectra edition. Uh, I'm gonna pass it up, of course. It's got them on the carousel, and yeah, I just had to have it. So after I read um, The October Country, I moved on to Dandelion Wine. Uh, I've got the Bantam Spectrum, no, Bantam Spectra edition of Dandelion Wine. And then this one, which is like one of my favorite covers. Uh, this one is the Bantam Books, like the special edition. And it's just, I've got a few of these editions and I really like them. This one, is from 1968 is that what that said 1968 it's not none of these are like first editions or anything but I, every time i find one of these in the wild i get so excited another spectra edition i have is the illustrated man uh this is actually one that i have not read yet but i'm hoping to read soon um it's got a great cover i don't know much about it except for it's a man that's covered in tattoos he's the illustrated man uh, I am just glad to be kind of like building this little collection here. Red Farewell Summer, which is kind of like a um, sequel, which I couldn't think of the word, to Dandelion Wine. So this has the same characters in it. It's just a little bit like later in the year. So Dandelion Wine is like the summer book and then Farewell Summer is like that transition from summer into fall. Again, it's very coming of age and nostalgic and I loved it. This is the only edition that I have though. Uh, I've never really seen this out at used stores ever that I can recall. I probably would have bought it if I did, but really enjoyed that one. One that I read this year is The Golden Apples of the Sun. This is another one of those um, Bantam book special edition things. Uh, this one is from 1967. This one's a little bit older. It's only like a fourth printing. Uh, this is another amazing cover. And when I was at the used bookstore and I saw it, I squealed <laughs> and just like snatched it right away. So I've read quite a few Bradbury this year. I read, was that this year? The Martian Chronicles. Yes, I did read that. This, this. I did read it this year. Uh, this is another collection of short stories. I really liked this. Uh, my dad said this is one of his favorite books of all time, so I read it like around his birthday. I have a whole vlog for it and I'll link it down below if I can remember. Um, but a lot of great stories, a lot about like space travel and like starting new colonies like on Mars and stuff. I also read The Toynbee Convector this year, which is another collection of short stories, science fiction, fantasy, short stories. This was another really great one. Like I can't really say much else except for like his short stories, they could be like a couple pages long and they just like really pack a punch. 
there's like always beautiful prose and something just so like sweet not sweet because there are like dark things happening but it's just so cozy and that's probably a weird word to use but I'm just like home when I read Ray Bradbury I also read uh, the last interview and other conversations. This is edited by Sam Weller, um, but this is uh, Sam and some of his like questions and discussions and interviews that he had with Ray Bradbury in like the last two years of his life, I think. This was amazing. It is so short. Ray Bradbury is like, like I must have been married to him in another life. <laughs> like he is so just the things he says and talks about like really hit home a lot he talks a lot about aging and time and what's important like being with your loved ones being in love and like prioritizing things and memories and it's just it is so good and I highlighted so many things in here I got this for my birthday um my husband like sent me out to go book shopping and I picked this up and it is a book that I will revisit so many times in my life and I just I cried <laughs> while reading it he talks about his cat like it was just it was so great I've got another edition of the illustrated man I love these editions uh, they are the Harper Voyager editions I think that they have like dandelion wine and like Fahrenheit 451 like maybe like the main big name novels um, but, uh, this is the only one I have so far, but I just found it at a used bookstore, so I grabbed it. One I found at my library book sale that I had never heard of was Ahmed and the Oblivion Machines, a fable. So, this is, like, a, a fable, a children's book. It's very short. It's illustrated. This was just, like, fine, but I'm glad to have read it and have it in my collection and, like, maybe share it with my son one day. I have another edition of The Martian Chronicles. This one is from 1980. Uh, it's got a very cool cover. It's pretty, you know, aged, but again, can't pass it up. Uh, again, like I said earlier, great collection. And yeah, glad to have it in my collection. Have I said that enough yet? The next few I have are collections, uh, short story collections that I've yet to read. This is Quicker Than the Eye. This is from the early 90s. This is a first edition, but it, I believe, it says it's new fiction from the author of the Martian Chronicles, but I, for some reason, I thought this was like, um, a collection of stories that had appeared elsewhere in other, like, magazines and publications and things of that sort, but I could totally be wrong, but just another short story collection, as well as One More for the Road. I just liked that cover. Uh, yeah. I don't know because it's a short story collection I haven't read. I've got I Sing the Body Electric, uh, another very cool cover, as well as A Medicine for Melancholy. Sorry, my dog distracted me. <laughs> Stories of Wonder, Fantasy, and Delight. Um, a guy riding a massive crab. I don't know, but had to have it. <laughs> and then I got R is for Rocket. This is 17 Selected Tales of Terror, Fancy, and Adventure. They keep talking about him being a science fiction writer, um, but I know Ray Bradbury said most of his stuff is fantasy. Um, but yeah, I I love these old editions. Like, I love collecting old books, if you didn't know that. Ray Bradbury or not, love collecting old books. This year I purchased Listen to the Echoes, the Ray Bradbury interviews by Sam Weller. This might be have some of the duplicates from the last interview book, um, but this one is much larger. Uh, it's got pictures. It's basically just all about Ray Bradbury and his life working in the, you know, being an author, but working on movies and like all kinds of stuff. Very cool end pages. Um, so I have yet to read this. I actually got it from a used bookstore. I got it from Half Price Books. So it was half off, still wrapped in the plastic and everything. And I'm very excited to get to this. It's one I just want to like soak up and just take my time with. Um, but I am so excited to read this. Last one I have, I know I've talked about probably a lot. Um, I know it's been in like a TikTok. I've vlogged it because I've read from it, like all kinds of stuff. Um, I have a hardcover copy of The Halloween Tree. 
amazing, amazing cover. I also have a paperback edition of this. Uh, it's the same cover and everything, but I put it in my son's library because he's not getting his grubby hands on this until like he's old enough um, because it is a signed copy. Um, it even came with the, um, sorry, it's stuck on the floor. The uh, event that he was at, the t like the ticket, <laughs> hi Ben, he uh, spoke at a university and this person, I mean like took notes and got their book signed and I found this at a used bookstore uh, and when I saw it, like I saw that it was hardcover, um, and I just like grabbed it and opened it up because I was like, okay, I already have the paperback. Like, do I want the hardcover? And then when I saw that it was signed, I kind of started crying and had to have it. And yeah, I, I, I don't know what else to say except for this is one of my prized possessions as well as the dog, but she, hey, you're ruining my video. Or she's making it better. I don't know. So that's it for my Ray Bradbury collection for now. <laughs> um, I'm always on the lookout for books from him when I'm out and about at used bookstores, little free libraries and things of that sort. And I just, he's one of my all-time favorite authors. And I am eager to read more from him. But I also, you know, he passed away. And so we only have what we have. <laughs> and so I don't want to like rush through it, even though I know Many of his works that I have read and loved will be reread and reread. And I feel like I, this, he is the type of writer that might appeal to young boys. I know that's kind of like gendering people and all that stuff, but a lot of his protagonists are young boys and everything. And I really hope that one day that I can share these stories with my son and that he loves them as much as I do. And yeah, I just really wanted to share this collection with you. I don't know why I'm making it so like fucking emotional and stuff, but my dog's causing more problems. So I'm going to go. Let me know if you read any Ray Bradbury. Um, are you stuck? Anyways, let me know if you've read any Ray Bradbury, if you've liked him or not. I totally get some of his prose is not for a lot of people, um, but I adore him. And he's one of my favorites of all time. And I'm really glad I finally made this video. So thank you for watching. I will see you in my next one.